That is okay. Oh, golly. Huh. All right. So, after <laughs> our minor technical difficulties. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, all right. So, um, would you introduce yourself for my viewers? Sure. Uh, my name is Dave. Uh, Dave Welch. I am a. Uh, I'm an author. Uh, I stay here in uh, Macon, Georgia. That's way down south, uh, past Atlanta. Uh, I've been here pretty much all my life. I moved up to Atlanta uh, in 2003 for college. I wanted to take up media arts and animation because I had a cartoon that I had been working on for like uh, 30 years now. And um, I wanted to you know, get the cartoon on TV and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized how much money <laughs> it costs yeah. to do that. <laughs> uh, making it yeah that stuff is extremely expensive so i, I tell myself you know it's uh, a lot of a lot of guys that, that look at my artwork they, they're like yo man when are we gonna see this move man and I, you know i was like the only way i can do this is to uh build a fan base mm -hmm. you know you get enough people behind you uh you generate enough numbers and then like a television syndicate could probably pick up your show and maybe give you a few uh a few uh, seasons, so yeah. I decided to write. I could take the story, put it in a novel, and just you know uh, start from there. So that's how I ended up writing, and I, it's a series, and I'm looking forward to you know really getting some guys on board because I want to see it on TV. Yeah, and I think a lot of people want to see it too because I, I'm not trying to <laughs> step on nobody's toes, but we you know spot. You know, you know, and we know Batman. We done seen these guys. They've been, you know, they're, they're the head honchos. They're right, running yeah. it, but uh, people want to see something a little newer, you know, something right, a yeah. little fresher. And I, I figured I could probably <laughs> give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. So are you? So are you saying that your your book series is what came from your original concept for the cartoon? Yeah, yeah, that's that's originally how it started because uh, I was doing like the script. I was writing the script for the animation. I had actually got with some guys. We had like uh, some studio time. We was doing voiceovers, all this stuff, man. Yeah. And then I, I sat down and I was trying to piece it together, you know, uh, get the animation going. And then I was like, yo, this is, I can't do this by myself, you know. Uh, it, it takes at least 3,000 people <laughs> to, to get that type of thing going. And I, I told myself, man, if I do this by myself, then it's going to be 60 years before I get finished. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I told myself, I said, yo, uh, let's get a book, man. Let's, let's start writing because I had the story in my head, yeah. you know? And I, I felt like that it, it was doing uh, me a disservice. Mm -hmm. to not tell this story yeah. to other people. So uh, I was so happy that I got a chance to uh, really just jot it down on paper. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, getting with Amazon and, you know, they let you publish for free. I was like, yeah. Uh, so, yeah and and um, I, I thought to myself that, you know, if I really want this to happen, I got I to gotta shake the bushes. Mm -hmm. So I started talking to people. I was running into... Uh, uh, marketing agents, you know, guys like that that's been in the industry and they know how it works. They told me, you know, some of the tricks of the trade and what you need to do and what you don't need to do. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it was, yeah, it was great, man. I was glad that I had the chance to uh, meet with some of these people. Yeah. Yeah. So I, and I would definitely say that um, being an independent publishing is a whole other ball game than trying to get something it is. published for sure right, right. um and yeah. you said you said before we were you know rudely interrupted by right Matt, um that it <laughs> that publishing a book or a series of anything at all is 
like starting a business. Yeah, it's it's exactly like starting a business. It's I, I think of a sandwich a lot of times mm-hmm. when when you're uh when you're when you're selling something. Uh, I think of McDonald's. I think of Burger King. I think of these guys, right? And whenever you go to Burger King, whenever you go to McDonald's, you expect that sandwich to be the same way. It's mm-hmm. the ingredients that you get. Yeah, you, know, you know what a Big Mac tastes like because it tastes the same way at every store. So when I write and uh, I look at other other books, and you know, even even though people have their own ingredients, they yeah. have their own flavor to write. It's still you know something that the people look for. It's something that they expect from a certain author. Like with uh, Stephen King, when you open one of Stephen King books, you know what you <laughs> you know what exactly. you got to step in. You know you know what you know what to expect. So uh, that's kind of what I wanted to generate uh, with the start of this series. I needed to come up with uh, my own flavor, my own style of writing, and just let the people find the book instead of the book finding the people. You know. Yeah. And uh, that's that's pretty much how I look at it, especially with it being a, a new series and it's just now starting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you got to have a, a solid product, a good sandwich, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's kind of how I look at it. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is really important because a lot of people when going into self-publishing have sort of this idea that you can just, you know, oh, well, it's free, so I can just throw it on there and press the button and ta-da, here you go which we've learned and I did a review recently of a series called the wand chronicles and that was obviously this person's perception was oh well I can just throw it up here you know pay like Mm -hmm. $25 for the covers and it'll be fine no um (laughs) 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 so and it's it's obvious that you have put a lot of a lot of thought and effort into packaging your work for success. Um, can mm. I ask you where you got your covers from? Oh and- uh, yeah, I uh, I met with a guy. His uh, he's on a website. It's called Reedsy, mm-hmm. and uh, this guy he uh, man, his name is Mike, mm-hmm. and Oh uh, man, this dude was so awesome, man. And because I went to his site and uh, I was looking around because like when you go to readsy.com, mm-hmm. they have like a group of editors. They have a group of, uh, of uh, graphic designers. They have a group of marketers. They have groups of, of, of uh, art readers, art reviewers. They got groups of people and people and people. So what you do is you go through and you look through the site You pick up on what you want done Mm -hmm. and they'll send you to this group of people and you select, you know, the people depending upon uh, what they have to offer you. And uh, I went to his his page and he had some of the dopest work, man. Like his his covers were so awesome. And I said to myself, I was like, yo, I got to get this guy to uh, redesign my cover because I did the first cover. And when I showed it, to the marketing agent, he was like, yo, no, man, take that down. What are you doing? <laughs> I was like, what? What's wrong with it? He says, no, don't do it. So <laughs> I took it down. Yeah. And I got with Mike, Mike Schwartz. That's what his name is, mm-hmm. Mike Schwartz. I got with Mike, man, and uh, he was so busy. He had so many other uh, novels and other covers that he was already doing. Mm-hmm. And he kept pushing the day back, pushing it back. I was like, man, what was taking so long? And then when he finally jumped on it and he started sending me like small little proofs and stuff, I was like, whoa, it was, yeah, it was mind blowing. Like he actually came up with the brand, Evolving Crane, the way the words is situated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I give him, I give him that credit like every day. I told him, I say, Mike, I want this on every novel, man. I mean, if I go to another artist and I get another artist to, to, to design the, the background stuff, I got to have, I got to use that. I got to use that branding, man, because this, it was just so yeah. solid. Yeah, yes. man, that guy. It is. I, I would work with him again. <laughs> <laughs> I would, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, because they're, they're quite impeccable, I will, I will say. Um, because yeah, I yeah. think one of the important things about 
establishing our legitimacy as you know authors in our own right being self-published mm-hmm. it's important that yeah. we have you know the ability to compete with right. traditional publishing exactly exactly yeah. and 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 not just you know not just the cover because uh, i know you know the saying about never judging a book by its cover yeah uh, so so the spine tingling as the front cover so i mean even now like i was telling you earlier before we got uh disconnected yeah. i was up to like five something still making adjustments to the to that novel because you know one of the things uh one of the things that that were mentioned to me uh you know with the marketing agent he was like yo you need to you need to get some feedback you need to put this in some uh, art readers hands yeah. and actually let them critique your writing so that's just like the sandwich i was talking about earlier if you give somebody a nasty sandwich and they don't say nothing you're gonna think the sandwich is good you're gonna keep handing it to people hey taste this nasty sandwich isn't right. it good you know yeah. if nobody says anything you're gonna keep making a fool of yourself but you know you give it to the right person they're gonna be like yo you need some salt man Right. <laughs> you, yeah. need some salt, you need some ketchup and yeah. you need some mayonnaise. This sandwich is disgusting, you know? But uh <laughs> Yes. I, uh, I got I got I got the chance to do that and I had some people they actually told me it was like, yo, you use so many words, man, you're so descriptive. You need to you need to dull it down some. You need to talk almost like you're speaking to a kindergartner but you're speaking to an adult at the same time. Mm-hmm. It needs to be that easy to read so yeah. the reader can actually make it through the book. And I was like, what? Cause I was trying to be fancy. You know, I was trying to yeah. say stuff all smooth and all cool and stuff, man. And adding all these words and I didn't even know what they meant, but I was like, man, that word sound <laughs> good. I throw it in there, <laughs> you know, I was finding, yo, I was finding this, check this out, right? I was finding this stuff out today, man. I was looking at some of these words at 5 a.m. in the morning. I was looking at yeah. some of these words and I was like, man, this word is awesome. Let me look that up. Yeah. I would look the word up and it had nothing to do with the sentence. I was like, holy cow, and I'm just putting this out there? No. <laughs> so I, I, man, I'm talking about, I was the, I was deleting stuff like crazy. I had, when I first put that novel out, the one that you have, okay, the yeah. one that you have has been completely redone. It's, a, yeah. it's like a whole nother book now. Mm-hmm. I lost at least, I want to say I lost maybe like 30 pages. Oh, yes. wow. I lost like 30 pages through edits. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like this is all coming from the arc readers and, and people that are really concerned about the flow of the story. Mm-hmm. They they help you out so much, man. Some of them are so brutally honest. Yeah. And if if you don't know how to take, you know, criticism, you you probably start crying, you know. But uh, I learned to take criticism and and you know take it in in, in all all love and you know honor and stuff. Oh yeah. It it helped me out so much, man. It really opened my eyes, and uh, I I actually had some people on the phone like they'd be talking to me while I'm in it, and they'll be like, yo, read me this sentence, man. Read me that sentence. Go to this page right here. You see this sentence? Take this crap out of here. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I worked so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, do you respect the fact that I bled on this page? Do you? Yeah, yeah, oh. exactly. And like, I had to, I had to open up uh, a, a, a empty file like a like a brand new document and the stuff that i extracted from the novel i would just paste it into this file Mm -hmm. and i'll just leave it there you know and maybe i could go back to this file and pull some of this stuff and use it in future novels later novels or something yeah as far as that first one goes you gotta you gotta hit the ground running man because if they don't like their first book they're not gonna get the second right yeah yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully not hit the ground running too hard because <laughs> the inevitable result of that is falling flat on the face. Hey. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, because I mean, I would have to say that 
critique partners and beta readers are yes crucial. yes they are it's like it's like gold man it's like real gold like uh so somebody from from uh france mm-hmm. they uh they they contacted me mm-hmm. and it was like yo you know you don't need a you don't need a corkscrew to open a bottle of a uh, of champagne i was like huh what are, you, what are you talking about? But when I went and, and I started reading through the novel, I saw that I had one of the characters looking for a cork bottle to open this bottle of champagne. I was oh. like, holy cow, that's the type, that's the type of the critique that I'm talking about. Like, yes. I had to go in there and start switching stuff around and deleting stuff because it wouldn't make any any real sense, you know? Why is she looking for a corkscrew when she yeah. can just get a towel and, you know, take the cork cork out of the bottle i was like what but yeah it's stuff like that that just really uh man it really made so much sense to me man and i like i mean some of the stuff that i would get from from uh feedback would be a little you know just people just throwing stuff out there because they didn't like it personally but then there's there's the fact you know what i'm saying the fact Mm -hmm. of the matter that something is inconsistent Mm-hmm. And when it's like that and it's, you know, void of the truth, yeah. you got to go and fix it, man. You got to, oh, yeah. you got to fix that stuff, you know? Yeah. Cause if you, if you put it out there like that mm-hmm. and someone reads your, your novel, they're going to be like, man, this author is an idiot. Right. You know? <laughs> <So> <laughs> I don't want to be the idiot. <laughs> no, no, no. You need people who are going to, you know, have your best interest at heart and not let yeah. you look like a fool. You know, right, 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 exactly. Oh my god, yeah, because I mean, so many of these people just you know bypass the whole habit, yeah. you know, getting mm-hmm. an honest critique. Which I would say, though, you do end up, even though you, you know, you meticulously edit and get everything formatted and you know, have critique partners, beta readers, all of that, and you publish the book and then get reviews. <laughs> Some, you know, some of the reviews are, you know, great. And some of them, like, you get ones that are petty taste grievances. Yeah, yeah. You no. Know? Mm-hmm. Like, um, and, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, like, uh, that's, that's like one of the, uh, one of the things about, uh, <clears throat> you know, feedback. It's, it's mm-hmm. good and it's bad, yeah. but, um. Uh, the bad stuff is is it's not so bad, mm-hmm. so to speak, because yeah. it's still a review. It's still a review. It's still somebody's opinion. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, when someone leaves a review, uh, you still have to find out for yourself. Like like with movies, uh, when Suicide Squad came out, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I was looking at the previews. I was like, oh man, that movies. I don't want to see that, you know. Yeah. And then. Uh, 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 Rotten Tomatoes, they gave it such a bad score. I was like, man, why they score it so bad? This movie must be really trash. Well, so they score like, you know everything what? bad, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. They <laughs> they do. And, and when I saw that score and I, I looked at the reasoning behind the score, I was like, man, I'm going to go see this myself, man. Yeah. So I went to the movie and I sat down and I watched Suicide Squad and they had the dopest soundtrack and some of the coolest graphics. And the storyline wasn't that bad, really. Right. I mean, they had a little a little things here and there. Yeah, but it, you know, a few plot holes. It was a great was movie. Great. Yeah. 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 It was it wasn't a bad film at all. So uh I don't really frown upon, you know, bad reviews. It's it's up to that to that reader, you know, uh, to take the the time to actually read a book, you know, yeah. to see if they like it or not. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of readers, they 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 make that uh, distinction within the first few pages. Yeah. If, if they can, you know, start reading and keep reading, yeah. nine times out of 10, you got a, you got a good book. So uh, yeah. I just didn't want to, like you were saying, fall flat on my face. Right, yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, especially, you know, especially with this being your first one, you know, and that's, 
that's mm. always you know the occupational hazard um but what i was leading into talking about petty taste grievances i think that a lot of readers wrongly ding writers who write in first person mm. and i noticed that from reading evolving crane that it is written in first person so what are your what are your views on people dinging authors for uh i think i i think that uh <clears throat> that is i can't say it's a personal issue because you know a lot of readers like to read you know a certain style of writing mm -hmm. but what i what i can say is that there are groups of people that don't mind first person yeah they don't mind second person they 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 like the uh the ability for for the novel to twist and turn and to go from one point of view to the next, uh, you know, that, that's not a that's not a bad thing. So I can't I can't you know I can't get mad at, at readers for you know not liking first person. Uh, I I would say that uh, you know expand your horizon a little. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe even try to you know make it through. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, first person book, but uh. Yeah, I, uh, I I thought about that uh, a lot too, and and, and I told myself, uh, you know, if I can read this, and I hate to read, if I can read this, then I know somebody else could, and and maybe I may just be on to something. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I would I would I wouldn't get mad at those type of things, man. I I I would be glad that they actually you know <laughs> said yeah. something about it. Yeah, you'd be like, thank you for actually you know reading the book. I yeah, reading it. Yeah, care at that least. You, only, you know, I don't care. You only gave me four stars because you know, mm -hmm. yeah. of first yeah. person. So you minused me a star, which I. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I, I kind of have a personal beef on this channel about that because, you know, so really? many authors I know that write in first person and mm. they get, you know, they get good reviews, but they always, they're always minus that one star simply because one star, of, yeah, you know, simply because that person, first person. Like, well, if mm. it weren't in first person, I would have given you five stars. That's just, Man. That's stupid. Like, what? Why, why don't you just, you know, <laughs> come on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, That's oh, crazy, yo. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, like I said, petty, petty taste grievances are not valid. Petty taste. Yeah. You know, judge me on, you know, the quality of my cover, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, the story. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Did you like mm -hmm. the story? Did you like the characters? What, you know, did you like how I put this out here? That's all that should matter, really. Um, and speaking of it being in first person, right, was, right. That, was that a conscious decision or did the story make that? Uh, I think it was a, uh, it was more story thing because um, I wanted to uh, let the people see what I saw in my head. And mm -hmm. it's kind of how, I guess, you know, the conscious part could play a role in it too, because um, I would I would just sit up, before I started writing, before I even started writing, I would just sit up and all these scenarios would play out in my head. I would see my characters fighting each other and it was looking so smooth and mm -hmm. cool and stuff. And I was like, if I could verbally state what I'm seeing in my head, yeah. transmit it to paper, maybe I can, you know, uh, get a team of people behind me. And that's that's kind of how, how it all started. I would, you know, my imagination would just run wild. And in order for me to catch it, I had to have like a pen and like a notepad. And I just had to jot the stuff down real fast. And I couldn't type it then because I was too busy doing other stuff. But uh, <laughs> I think that's... I think that's how, how pretty much how it started. You know, the conscious mind just got to rolling and it, it started coming out, man. I couldn't hold it in my head anymore. I felt bad because I, I, I was feeling like I was the only one that thought this cartoon would be cool, you know? Yeah. And I had to I had to figure out that, you know, in order in order for other people to feel the same way, they gotta see it. Yeah. If they can't see it, 
they at least need to hear it or read about it or something. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your your stories have to be out there where other people can read and see them because, you know, how can yeah. you see the world if they're still between your ears? Mm-hmm. Yep. And that was a fear that I had to shed for myself because, mm-hmm. you know, I was thinking uh, that I'm probably the only one that could like this cartoon. It's uh-huh. so crazy and it's, it's, it's so uh, overboard, you know, but I had to make it a reality. And the only way I could do that was to push it out there. I had to get it out there. And, and I didn't want to put it out there any kind of old way. So yeah. uh, that's that's when all the editing came in. That's when uh, Mike Schwartz, that's when he came in. Mm-hmm. That's when my marketing agent came in. And you know, I was, and even to this very moment in time, I'm still like going through it, uh, twisting stuff around, removing some things here and there. Cause, I want it to flow like real smooth, man. I want, I want the cartoon to, I want it to draw a crowd. Yeah. So, you know, people, you know how people respond to Game of Thrones? Yes. You know how they feel about the, the walking dead, you know? Mm-hmm. I, want, I want people to feel like that about a cartoon. That's, yeah. that's what I'm looking to do. So. Yeah. I think I think if I could pull that story off, you know, through the novel, then I, mm-hmm. I might have something going on there. <laughs> well, I did notice that I I felt that it could translate very well to a visual medium, and I was wondering if you, because I think it's interesting that you mentioned the cartoon because before I was thinking, had you thought about doing a um like companion graphic novel at yes, a- i was i was i uh, i have a character uh he's a nazi uh-huh. and he he gets he, uh, it's later on down the line it's actually in the second novel but uh a lot of people was really into him it was like man this guy is really interesting i'd like to see you know, where he goes. So I was going to give him his standalone novel Mm -hmm. and that novel was going to be a graphic novel. And it was still going to be a part of the Evolving Crane series, Mm -hmm. but it would be a graphic novel. That's what I was, that's really what I was looking at doing, uh, especially with him, because I I didn't want to, you know, (laughs) attract a certain grade of people. But, you know, it is what it is, man, (laughs) you know? He's a cool character. Uh, people like him. So I'm like, hey, yeah, all right, hey cool. Hey, He's a read- Nazi, but yeah. Right. <laughs> readers are readers everywhere, and everybody's money is just as green as everyone else's. So Yeah, that's right. Yeah, as long exactly. as you're selling copy, that's all that matters. That's all that matters, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's the bottom line. Stone Cold said so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness yeah it's like i i have no i have no you know say over what my readers do in their spare time or how they right, think right. as long as they're buying copy that's all that matters mm-hmm. <laughs> yep you're right you're right mm-hmm. so um so are you thinking of moving this into kind of an expanded universe kind of thing yeah, yeah, that's, I, I wanted to, uh, I, I really wanted to expand it. I really do. I was, I, this is going to be so left field. What I'm about to say to you is going to be really left field because the, the likelihood of this happening is just, oh man, I, I, I hate to be honest, but you know, it's probably not going to happen, but I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah, uh, <laughs> say it out loud. I, it most likely will happen. I, I wanted to create a uh a universe Uh that could uh connect Mm -hmm. uh, marvel Mm -hmm. dc image uh amazon shows like a way to connect every character that we've always loved and we've always enjoyed i wanted to create a way that all of these guys could just pop up on the screen Uh and be on the screen at one time and, you know, it's like I was saying, that's, that's probably a bit outlandish, 
But uh, hey, you know, it's, the best ideas <laughs> are. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and that's one of the things home. about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things about evolving crane is that yeah. uh, uh they, these guys they they tamper with the multiverse. They. they mm-hmm they reach into other universes. And, yeah. uh, you know, in, in order to make that like a sound doctrine, uh, you know, some of these other characters may get touched, man. And I, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, put it out there like that, but yeah. it, that's what that's what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to, yeah. Well, hey, I mean, if you can, I mean, I think if you do it gradually enough, mm-hmm. it, you know, it will. Yeah. And, you know, as like a lot of these are moving into because of how aged they are, um, a yeah, lot of yeah. moving into like public domain use, mm-hmm. you know, for some people. So it leaves it open for especially those of us in independent publishing to create right, right. to other people's work. So do you think that'll make it more of a likelihood? I- I, I think I think that would be more of a likelihood, yeah. Uh, especially if it's if it's more of, of a parody, you know, because they they they'll let you do that as long as you're not just trying to snatch somebody's character and, and steal them into your own world type of thing. You yeah. don't have to worry about copyright infringement when you're doing a parody, you know. Right. So I, I figured that may, maybe I could make it more of a comical type of thing, but you know, it's still a level of seriousness to it. Yeah, I think it'll. I think it'll pass then. But this, this is all in the making, man. This is yeah. it's all in the air kind of stuff. It's <laughs> it's a dream, you know. So, <laughs> well, hey, I mean, it's just a. Uh, you can you can you can make it a reality though. I mean, you're you're an author, mm-hmm. so you know that automatically makes you the person who def- who's able to define the creative chaos, you know, mm-hmm. through your authority and make it a reality that's what you know yeah that's what mm-hmm. it is dreams that you can hold in your hand mm-hmm. i like it i like that dreams you can hold in your hand yeah yeah, yeah. so is would you say that that's one of your most enjoyable aspects of being a storyteller is the fact that you can create dreams people can hold in their hand uh, yeah yeah i i would i would think that you know being able to 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 dream uh, just dreaming you know uh, having the imagination and being able to put it on paper i think that is that's like bar none man and it's it's one of the things ever you know with being an author especially if people like what you're doing if they want to see more of what you're producing they enjoy the dream they don't want to wake up you know so uh I, I figured that if I could really like lure people in, lure some guys in, lure some girls in, and make them, you know, like real fans, then yeah, I could possibly see that cartoon on TV one day. But it's got to have it's got to have a foundation, you know. Yes. And I think the because I've I, I've seen so many books uh-huh. that uh, novels, you know, that started off as novels, yeah. and now Amazon has them. They're 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 on Amazon Prime. Netflix has the books, and and yeah. and they actually tell you when you when you go and you you know you pick the you pick the movie up, and it tells you uh, nominated uh, best New York Times bestseller. They have all that information, yeah. And you know it, it it dawns on you. You're like, man, this was a book. Yeah. I mean, Netflix has they have a category of uh, movies that were once books. They yeah. got a category just for that. And I was like, well, look at all these movies that were once novels. Mm-hmm. That's crazy, man. So I, I know the possibility is there. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to doubt myself at all, man. I'm just, yeah. I'm just going in, you know? Yeah. Well, like I said, go big or go home. So, you know, you got to. And- <laughs> right. <laughs> So it's, it's definitely a possibility, I would say, um, with creating an expanded universe, I know you're, you're starting from this point. Is there anything that you do in particular to keep yourself from getting lost in your story as you're weaving this larger web? 
Yeah, I I I know how the story ends, mm -hmm. and I because uh, it's I wanted it to carry on like Star Wars. You know how Star Wars just keeps going and going and going, but uh, even Star Wars had a legitimate end. That was an yeah. end to uh, you know the Sith to the Jedi. That was an end to it, and yeah. then the new guys came. And they just kept rolling it on and on. So I I like that aspect about you know you know the sci-fi realm, uh, uh, the Jedi. You know I love that kind of stuff, man. And the people look at me and they're like, "Hey, man, you black? What you doing liking Jedi?" I'm like, "Yo, <laughs> I came up on this stuff, man. That was like my thing, man. Yes, I love that kind of stuff, man. But uh, I I think that you know if I can uh, keep the end result in mind mm -hmm. that'll that'll keep me from you know branching out too far uh you know yeah. making uh drastic errors mm -hmm. uh, countless mistakes it's keeping that you know the main focus uh knowing how the story loops and how it turns and uh eventually how it ends because mm -hmm. i mean it's like a roller coaster ride yeah you know uh you, you start off slow you you there's that 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 anticipation there's the uh, climax you're, you're going through all these loops and then there's the there's the resolution to resolve everything smooths out that's the end of the ride folks get off next <laughs> you know so uh <laughs> that's that's the that's the formula that's yeah. the formula that i want to use for my story and mm -hmm. that's not just the entire story that's each edition every novel it has to have that same formula and yeah i want it to make sure that I just keep it consistent. Mm -hmm. I keep it straightforward and I don't venture off too much because you know that, that's a that's an error by itself, man. You can end up losing uh, you know, some readers doing that. So Yeah, you can. Yeah. And also, you know, um some authors have a tendency to come across like, you know, a, an old senile storyteller around a campfire that mm -hmm. can't finish a single thought without going off in another direction if they don't have some kind of a you know trajectory <laughs> and um also they have a tendency to go through what they call the marathon in the middle when writing a series do you think that you having a set trajectory for where your story is going also to helps also helps to alleviate any kind of a slog that you get in the middle mm. Uh, I think that uh, I think that that the story is designed to uh, it's designed to spread mm -hmm. because that's that's sort of like what the antagonists uh, they, they want to spread they want to reach everything mm -hmm. and you know that that could that could play a, a huge factor in you know me splitting off from doing so much other stuff you know having that crisis in the middle of the story mm -hmm. uh, but. I, I I know what happens with these bad guys, you know, and I, I know about their motivation, what triggers them, uh, what causes these guys to make mistakes. And a lot of times understanding your characters mm -hmm. uh, helps you understand the story. So I've been working on this for like 30 years, man, pretty much all my life. I started this cartoon when I was eight years old. I had an alphabet. I had, yeah, I had a dictionary. I I had a cartoon Bible, like a whole, mm -hmm. I had a whole bunch of stuff, man. And I lost it. I lost it in the, uh, uh, we was, my sister and I, we was moving somewhere and I was still out of town. I had came back in and she had everything in the storage, uh, like a storage unit. I had all of my stuff in there, man. I had everything. Uh, and I went to the storage unit, everything was gone. They had them auctioned it all off. Oh, so, no. you know, I, yeah, yeah, it was bad, man. So I, I lost, you know, I lost access to all of that stuff, but I still had it in my head, you know? Yeah. I, I knew exactly what was happening with these characters. And, that, you know, knowing that will eliminate, you know, that, that crisis in the middle that you was talking about. It'll eliminate that, man. But you, you got to know what, what your characters are doing, what the motivation is behind, you know, the, the actions that they commit to, uh, especially in the storytelling aspect, because it's so easy to it's so easy to take your characters and just run them through the mill, you know. Yeah. But uh, 
I think I think if 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 readers <clears throat> if readers have a character that they like in particular, you can do what you can to try to <laughs> yeah. salvage that character, you know, yeah. uh, to keep them liking them. But uh, sometimes you, you may lose that favorite character in the first yeah. book. You know? <laughs> so, um, would you say that? you know, cause you said getting to know your characters and in a way practicing empathy for mm-hmm. how your characters operate. Do you think that that is what helps you to create as engaging characters as you do? Mm, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think that understanding uh, uh, sympathy, empathy, uh, compassion for your characters, you, you have to think of them as if they were you. Mm-hmm. so to speak. I, I know that sounds crazy, but uh, it, it, like you, you think of yourself as another person and how would this other person respond in the heat of conflict? And how would that other character respond? You know, you, they're bouncing off of each other. And that's the dynamic of the story. You know, these characters, they, they communicate in so many different ways. And, uh, you know, the communication escalates to something else. You know, action uh, is the end result. Uh, somebody might get slapped. Somebody might get shot. Somebody might hug somebody. You know, somebody might start kissing. It's it's all it's all in the in the elements of, of the storytelling aspects. So I think uh, you know, uh, understanding what you want to happen to that character. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's you know, that's the compassion within itself. It generates uh, as you're reading or as you're developing your own story. Um, and uh, just just kind of being that the guy or the girl, you know, if you know author, male author, whatever, uh, when you're when you're writing these characters out, <clears throat> you gotta you gotta think about yourself, you know, who who do you like mm-hmm. in, in your own story? Who's your favorite character? Who's your least favorite character? Uh, I, I was looking at a an interview I got uh, from a, from another guy. Mm-hmm. And he 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 asked one of his questions was, if uh, you had the chance to meet one of your characters in real life in person, who would it be? I started thinking about all my characters. I was like, I wouldn't want to meet none of these guys, man. They're, <laughs> <laughs> they're so bad. They're so awful. You know? But you know, then I then I thought a little bit more, and I was like, well, maybe I could meet this one girl, you know, in real yeah. life. But that's, that's because I have the understanding that I have mm-hmm. about my yeah. characters. And I think if other authors, you know, regardless of, uh, you know, sexual orientation, none of that stuff matters. If, right. if you have a character that you know you feel a certain way about, you might want to, you know, take it into consideration how they're going to react and how people are going to respond to them. Because once you start jotting this stuff down, man, and, and that story starts flowing, yeah. and those characters start bouncing off of each other, it's hard to stop, you know. It's hard yeah. to stop. So. so would you say that you are the kind of author who has a favorite character, or are you one of those people that can't choose between their brain children? I've I've got a I've got a favorite character. And uh this guy is uh his name is Contras. Mm-hmm. He is he's an alien and he is a drug dealer. He supplies drugs to universes like he goes to other universes and he's got this device it's called the triple b it helps him you know get all this stuff out in mass quantities but uh i like him because he i mean he's, he's a bad guy so it's sort of like an anti-hero type of thing yeah and he goes through a dramatic character change like it's a huge dramatic character change it's not just he doesn't just go up he doesn't just go down. He, he's just up and down, up and down. And he's constantly changing. He's constantly maneuvering through the story. And another thing that I like about him is that he has no filter. Like, uh, whatever, he's, whatever he says, that's it. If it comes up in his head, it pretty much comes out of his mouth. Yeah. And it's, it's always something that I would never say to anybody, mm-hmm. especially if I'm, I'm around like, you know, very important people, like my mama or my sister, or, you know, maybe somebody's yeah. just looking to produce <laughs> my cartoon. I'm yeah. going to be pretty, you know, lenient about what I say and how mm-hmm. I say it. 
this guy? No, nah, man. He says whatever <laughs> he wants to. He don't care who you is. No. If you was about to, if you was about to pay him a million dollars, he would not filter his speech. He would still say whatever he wanted to say, and uh, you know, sometimes that would alter his outcome. You know, mm. a lot of times, yes, <laughs> that would alter his outcome. Uh, but uh, I, that's what I like about him because uh, when I when I write him, mm-hmm. I know that I can say whatever I want to say. You know, from an author's aspect, I can put whatever I want to put on this sheet of paper because that's that character. That's mm-hmm. how he that's how he talks. And it's it's like a relief. It's a freedom that I get whenever he becomes the focal point of a novel or like a sub chapter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's probably why he's my favorite character. And it's not about his abilities and you know some of the cool stuff he can do. It's about me being able to jot down and say whatever I want to say. Some of that stuff is just so vulgar, man. But <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's because I would yeah. never say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe like maybe very privately. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think that that's one of the things that one of the other things that you enjoy most about being a storyteller is the fact that you create people with whom you can be completely yourself and step outside of yourself yeah that's that's a huge joy for me to be able to do that it's a it's a huge joy for me to uh be able to stimulate you know someone's mind if not just through uh you know character conflict uh character development it, it may just be through a love scene you know all, all of that stuff is is coming from your imagination it's it's things that you would like to see uh you know in 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 your mind and maybe even uh from the television so it's like yeah it's a huge joy uh, for me to be able to do that because it's it's a it's a uh, it's a place that not everyone can go to especially when you're uh, in real life you know uh, the imagination it's like it's a it's a beast man especially when you start talking about time travel you start talking about space exploration man you, you get to create all types of creatures they can have as many arms as they want to have. You can give them so many eyes. You can you can put limbs in places they ain't supposed to go. Right. It's it's a <laughs> yeah, man. It's it gets it gets wild, yo. And <laughs> I think that's I think that's one of the best things about science fiction because you don't have to stick to a norm. You're not in a box. Yeah, the box is eliminated, man. Yeah. It's you're talking about the cosmos here Mm -hmm. and that's that's like a place that no one on earth will ever be able to conquer you can't you can't grasp the cosmos you you just can't it's stuff it's stuff happening out there now that'll blow our minds man and Mm -hmm. like like i was i was doing some research Mm -hmm. and it said that uh lightning you know like the lightning bolt they say that is the weakest power the weakest power in the cosmos Mm -hmm. lightning and when we look at lightning, we see that stuff flashing. We like, oh, right. Mr. Betsy. We get scared, man. We get yeah. terrified. But that is the weakest thing in the cosmos. I'm like, what? You mean it's something worse than that out there? Yeah. Jeez, man. So uh, I think about that kind of stuff when I'm writing. And mm-hmm. I think about that stuff when I when I have the uh, ability to create characters. I'm like, yo, I can pretty much do whatever I want to do. Oh, I can yeah. take I can take these characters and I can turn them into whatever I want them to be. And uh the imagination just it just does its thing after that. And that is like, man, if I'm if I'm feeling depressed or if I'm feeling down about something, mm-hmm. I can either start drawing and let my imagination run wild, or I can start writing. And it just it just evaporates, man. I, I'd encourage anybody, you know, if if you if you're an author, if you're an artist, uh, you know use it use that talent man don't don't let don't let you know the world bog you down because that imagination is a gateway man it's a getaway oh yeah 
most definitely and not just for us ourselves mm-hmm. but for other people yeah yeah exactly yeah because you i mean you get to especially like for for painters uh guys that do a, a lot of uh like natural uh masterpiece artwork man mm-hmm. you get a blank canvas and you know the regular person would see a blank canvas and they'll be like yeah what, what do i do with this you put that in front of an artist man oh my mm-hmm. gosh yo, you, you'd be surprised at what they come up with i mean just the simple the simplest stroke of yeah. a paintbrush could change a man's life you know yes that imagination man that's uh, they, they used to tell me all the time when i was coming up uh a mind is a terrible thing to waste yes. <laughs> Yes. A terrible and, thing to waste. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or my dad would just stop it at thing. He would say the mind <laughs> is a terrible thing. <laughs> oh, that's that's even better, yo. <laughs> I gotta use that. <laughs> the mind is a terrible thing. <laughs> Like there's a whole other awesome, after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just cut it off a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh my goodness. But do you think that being an independent publishing, you like that better because you are able to untether your imagination and not have anyone try and put you in a box? Yeah, yeah. Cause I uh that that kind of reminds me of like uh working on the uh and uh and umbrella that, that's kind of what it reminds me of when, when you're a self-publisher or you're uh like an entrepreneur mm-hmm. you, you own your own business uh you get the ability to kind of you know create as you go yeah. and uh some people just don't like being boxed in man like uh it, it puts a uh, it's like a dampener mm-hmm. on your creativity yeah and you, you feel like you're not being utilized to your best of potential so mm-hmm. yeah I, I oh man i hate being boxed in don't box me in you know if you go box me in just let me go right you know, that's <laughs> i would i would i would rather be a self-publisher because uh you know at that point all i have to really worry about is you know the cover design mm-hmm. i gotta worry about the interior you know editing purposes and i gotta worry about the content the story flowing you know but as long as it's flowing as long as it's moving yeah. Yeah, I, I can still let my creative creativity flow, yeah. Yep, because you know imagination is not meant to be put in the box. Yeah, you can't box it in. If you box it in, it's not imagination anymore. Right. It's it's yeah. not. It's 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 a uh it's a corrupt solution. That's what it is then. Mm-hmm. Because uh at some point you, you reach that wall because you're in you're in that box. Yeah. People want to, people want to spread beyond the wall. They want to mm-hmm. branch out, you know. Uh, and if if people remain locked in, we wouldn't see uh, some of the stuff that we're seeing on on the TV now. We wouldn't see some of the movies, uh, Endgame. Game. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't be seeing that kind of stuff, man. Uh, that that movie was so fascinating. Yeah. Uh, 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 Avatar, mm-hmm. fascinating film, man. Like you you see that stuff. And you're like, man, some aliens must have made this. Look at this crap, man. This yeah. stuff is, this stuff is outrageous. Mm-hmm. But it's because you know people aren't locked in. Those guys that are creative like that, those artists, those those directors, those producers, they know what they get into. Yeah. They, they know that you know the creativity mm-hmm. and, and the mind. Uh, uh, some of these undiscovered portions of the brain have to be used, man. Uh, the, mm-hmm. We got all this sense about ourselves. Right, you might as well put it to use, man. And I, I think that creativity, that you know, that just the ability to be able to create stuff, man. It's yeah, that's that's one of the best things about being, you know, uh, you know, part of the human human race, yeah, <laughs> part of humanity, you know. Yeah, we were we were given a gift, so you know. yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it would be a shame of of us to. Uh, you know, squander that gift and not even use it, man. That's, yeah, that's crazy, man. And I, I, I think about that a lot of times when I started writing. I'm like, you know what? If I box myself in, 
that's going to make this story really dull. It's going to make it really yeah. boring. Uh, so I, I, I tend to keep excitement mm -hmm. on every page. I want something exciting happening on every page. And, uh, you know, in, in the end, there is still like a whole plot at the same time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like it's like a box, but inside a box, inside another box. And it's all centered around this huge planet, around this huge universe. And we want to unbox all of this stuff mm -hmm. so it can get out, you know? Yeah. And uh, that, that's what I that's what I try to tell people. Don't 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 be trapped inside of that box. Unbox yourself. Yeah. You know, let, let your create creativity flow. Well, I am not going to keep you here for too much longer, but everyone will get <laughs> to see how you unboxed your imagination on the 30th. <laughs> Yeah, August the 30th. Yeah, yeah. Evolving oh, Crane. Yeah, so we're so excited. Um, but I'm gonna ask you one last question. And it's okay. a, a would you rather question. Okay. Okay. Would you nah. rather be a noun or an adjective? And out of either, what noun or adjective best describes you? Whoa. Hmm. I think I would rather be a noun. And uh, oh, we, I think that noun would probably be Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just tell you that is the best answer to that question I have gotten out of all of the times I have asked it. <laughs> well, that is awesome, though. <laughs> I love it. Oh my God! <laughs> nobody, nobody has answered with their name. I have, I have been waiting. Oh, oh yeah. So yes, we're definitely, definitely gonna. Hey, have history, to <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely gonna have you. Right. Here. So yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate this, man. Thank you so much. I, I, I'm glad you gave me a chance to okay. you know, uh, yeah, speak I'm, to everybody. Hey, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I am I am glad that, that you gave me the opportunity to interview you. So, yes. Um, sweet, sweet. We will, we'll see you again. And um, keep being Dave. Yes. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> All right. I'll All see right. you later. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>